Brandon Duham will play today. Matt Zuccarello will not. We take a look at the lineup changes plus preview tonight's game against the Buffalo Sabres today on Locked on Wild. Your Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find Lockdown Wild on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's pregame edition of Lockdown Wild, we take a look at tonight's game against the Buffalo Sabres. We'll look at an addition to the lineup and a subtraction as well. We'll talk about the goalie situation, and we'll look at how the Sabres have done over their last five games. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. The Wild at the Buffalo Sabres tonight. The Wild will welcome a familiar face back to the lineup, but an injury situation that has developed for the Wild. Plus, uh, we'll set the uh, record straight as to what happened to Philip Gustafson against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So a lot to get to here in today's game. Before we talk about the Buffalo Sabres, let's look at the lineup changes or the Minnesota Wild heading into this game tonight. Brandon Duhame makes his return to the lineup. Welcome back to Brandon Duhame, who was playing some great hockey before he was injured. And he's got a spot in the lineup right off the bat because Matt Zuccarello suffered an injury against the Tampa Bay Lightning, and so he is day-to-day. And uh, from the sounds of it, Dean Evison saying he will not play in tonight's game against the Sabres. He will make the trip to New York next week for the Rangers and Islanders games. So it sounds like it's a short-term injury for Zuccarello. Uh, That is a concern, though, because uh, you're taking one of your top offensive weapons off the board, and you are putting in a guy in Duhame who brings some speed, brings some energy, but he's not Matt Zuccarello offensively. So that, uh, that is a little bit of a concern right off the bat. Interesting that the lineup with Matt Zuccarello out features Matt Boldy on the top line with Kirill Kaprizov. So we get to see a little bit of Matt Boldy and Kirill Kaprizov, hopefully, in tonight's game against the Sabres. Brandon Duhame taking the spot that Boldy previously occupied with Freddie Goudreau and Ryan Hartman. So you've got kind of the all-offense line that top line of Kaprizov and Boldy and Steele. And then you have more of a kind of grief line light in Duhame, Goudreau, and Hartman. Now, those guys certainly can bring some offense as well, but that is going to be a line that can uh, can give you a nice defensive presence as well. And it comes at a really good time for the Wilds going up against a Sabres team that features a pretty top-heavy lineup, as we'll talk about here in a second. And so being able to utilize a couple of those defensive-minded lines against the Sabres is certainly not going to be a bad thing. Goalie-wise, we're going to get Marc-Andre Fleury in the net for the Wild, and Zane McIntyre will be the backup goalie, at least for this Sabres game. Philip Gustafson leaving the game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. It was an illness, not an injury, so a huge sigh of relief because everybody after that game was kind of scrambling, wondering what the heck was going on with Gustafson. Turns out it's just a little bit of a flu bug. So we'll see if he's available for Sunday, but uh, the Wild opting to let him just stay home and try to kick it as opposed to traveling with the team and maybe keeping it in his system a little longer than normal. So Nothing to uh, to really worry about with Gustafson. Just trying to get a little bug out of his system. And so, uh, huge bullet dodge there. But uh, that Zuccarello loss is going to be a big one because not only are you losing that top chemistry with Kaprizov, you're losing one of your best power play guys. You're losing one of your best scorers 
uh, in the lineup. And so this is going to be a wild team that is going to really have to focus on slowing down the Sabres, focusing on the defensive side of the puck, and letting the offense kind of happen as the game goes. They're certainly capable of it. And with Kirill Kaprizov leading the charge, I I don't care if it's the Buffalo Sabres. I don't care if it's one of the better defensive teams in the NHL. The Sabres are not that, by the way. They, uh, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, they're not a team that is what I would call elite lockdown defensively or uh, shut down goalie-wise. So Kirill Kaprizov can certainly do it himself. And maybe we see a little bit more of that with Matt Zuccarello out of the lineup. But uh, this is going to be an opportunity for Matt Boldy to really help kind of push that line forward, uh, taking some of those top minutes himself. Other than that, the lineup will stay the same. You've got the grief line still rolling, and you've got Ryan Reeves, Connor Dewar, and Mason Shaw once again occupying the fourth line. So in looking at the keys, we'll do the keys first because then we're going to talk about how the Sabres have been doing and who to watch out for with the Buffalo lineup. Um, for the keys for this Minnesota Wild team, Matt Boldy, please and thank you step up and fill that Matt Zuccarello spot in the lineup. Um, this is a perfect opportunity for Boldy to have a huge game, getting the opportunity to play all night with Kirill Kaprizov. We've seen them play together in spurts off of successful penalty kills. And so um, it's not like they'll be playing together for the first time here tonight. This will be the first extended action they get. And so a great opportunity to um, great opportunity to try to give that line some chemistry and to really turn that into a wrecking ball line uh, for this game against the Sabres. Grief line is going to need to lock down the Tage Thompson, Alex Tuck connection when those guys are out on the ice. And because it's in Buffalo, you're not going to have the luxury of the last change. And so not only is that line going to need to be able to provide defensively, but a perfect opportunity for Brandon Duhame to slot in with Ryan Hartman and Freddie Goudreau. And for that line to be able to contribute on the defensive side of the puck as well. To where you have Buffalo not able to pick and choose the matchups they want because uh, there is not a exploitable weakness line for them to go up against. So everybody pulling their weight. This is another one of those games where it will be nice if Marc-Andre Fleury can hold down the fort early and uh, and weather what is going to be a charged up Buffalo Sabres team because with, uh, with all the news regarding DeMar Hamlin this week, it's going to be a fired up building for the Sabres, their first home game since that incident occurred on Monday Night Football, and uh, the town of Buffalo going to definitely be rallying behind him, uh, and so uh, it's going to be an electric atmosphere for the Sabres, and so if Flurry can weather some of that and uh, keep the wild in it, that's going to go a long way as well. As we'll talk about in the last five for both of these teams, this is not a Sabres roster that is what I would call adept at the power play, or the penalty kill, or in the net. And so this is going to be a real opportunity for the Wild to uh, to jump this Sabres team and to uh, to try to get out to an early lead and hold it because it's not like you're having to worry about trying to find a way to poke through uh, against these Sabres goalies, whoever it may be, because the numbers aren't great. And so as we continue our pregame edition of Lockdown Wild, let's take a look at how the Sabres have been doing at so far this season. We will do that right after this. You're on Lockdown Wild. Today's pregame edition of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, you have to give Built Bar a try. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right. 100% real chocolate. And they come in some unbelievably good flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. We've been talking about how you can head to built.com to grab yourself a box, but now you don't need to wait around. You can head to your local Walmart or Sam's Club 
to find your favorite flavors. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can grab a four-pack box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Or if you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors such as brownie batter and churro. You'll thank me later. If you're not, Built.com is always a great place to grab your favorite flavors. So get rolling with Built Bar to start your 2023 on an amazingly healthy note. Today's episode also brought to you by betonline.net. They're your number one source for sports betting info plus stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the final week of the NFL to the college football championship game to the NBA to the NHL, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your sports betting info. So head to their website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Continuing today's pregame edition of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And over the last couple of years as well. Previewing tonight's action against the Buffalo Sabres. Sabres come in. They have been on a nice little roll over their last few games. They are 4-1 and in their last five. 19 goals in that span, so just under four goals a game. They've given up 15 in that span as well. Power play percentage, they're at 13.3. In those five games, so they have had some power play success, but it's not like they've been blowing the doors off on the power play, and their penalty kill is at 76.9% for that span as well. And uh, if you back it up all the way to the start of the season to look at those numbers, uh, the Sabres power play has been really good, 28.2% on the season, but their penalty kill stands at just 73.1%. So it's a team that can score on the power play, but it's a team that has some struggles on the penalty kill as well. Uh, Defensively, they give up uh, 3.39 goals per game, and they score just under four uh, per game as well. So it's a team that can score in bunches. You'd expect that with Tage Thompson leading the way, one of the top scorers in the NHL to this point. And uh, he comes into this one 55 points in 26 games, which is just insane for Tage Thompson. He's got uh, the 30 goals, Alex Tuck with 18 himself, and he's at 42 points over the, uh, the 36 games that he's played. You got Jeff Skinner chipping in 17 goals as well, then Victor Olofsson with 13, Dylan Cousins with 12, and Rasmus Dahlin with 10 goals himself. So it's a Sabres team that definitely can score, but it's two or three guys. You've got to be worried about being the ones that uh, that light the lamp the most frequently. Um, and so having a couple of lines defensively that can try to slow that lineup down is going to be a plus in this one. This is going to be a game, I think, where the Wild try to play more of a physical, slower style. To, uh, to try not to get into those uh, the track meets that they got into last year because uh, that could be a situation, especially on the road, where things flip and get a little dicey uh, against this Sabres team. Goalie-wise, it's been a little bit of a struggle for the um, Sabres so far this season as um, they've had uh, a couple of injuries so far this year. And so uh, they have, they've, they've gone through a few goalies to say the, the least. Uh, Craig Anderson, the old veteran, uh, has been their most, uh, their most tested goalie so far this season. They had Eric Comrie as well, but uh, he is actually on injured reserve at the moment. So their backup goalie is Uko Pekka Lukanen, who is uh, eight and three. So far this season, his goals against average, though, 3.39. And uh, you look at Anderson, he's 7-5-1 with a 2.61 goals against average. 
As for who gets the start, Pekka Lukanen started on the third, so he was the most recent starter for the Sabres, which leads me to believe that we may see Anderson in this one tonight, uh, and so uh, a chance for them to pounce on another older goalie uh, that is for the Minnesota Wild here in this one tonight, and Marc-Andre Fleury getting the start. We know that going in. So it should be a good matchup between these two teams. If you can shut down Tage Thompson and not let him continue the role he's been on, I like the Wild in this one tonight, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see how things play out because as we alluded to, some external factors going on in the Buffalo area that could lead to uh, one of those supercharged nights for the Sabres here this evening. We'll see what happens. We've got you covered with our postcast after the game, so make sure to join us there. And uh, we'll wait and see what happens. It should be a good one tonight between the Wild and the Sabres. We've got you covered every step of the way, pre- and post-game. Plus, we'll have a pre-game for you tomorrow against the Blues. So make sure you subscribe everywhere you can to Locked on Wild on YouTube, on your favorite podcast platforms. We have you covered with new episodes all week long, plus pre- and post-game coverage all part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.